Interfaces are one of the core components in TypeScript. This is not specific to Angular. Interfaces help your development in focus on the shape of your object. This is commonly called duck typing or structural subtype. To create an interface or model in Angular, we simply create a TypeScript class file and define the shape of the object that needs definition. Making use of these classes, we can create objects. Suppose you want to load a data from URL, then you, you're just fine by using a raw JSON from response and utilizing it for your application. The trouble here is when it comes to maintainability, the response we try to get from API is just another JSON object. It doesn't have a shape or a definition and what you're going to do with it. It doesn't have properties. It doesn't have a definition of your properties. So interfaces are great when it comes to type checking and as a developer, we can make sure what kind of data object we are using in your application. So for example, if there are like five or 10 people working in your uh, team, interfaces is a great way to uh, give the definition of the object that you have created. So an next person comes in and checks in your code, it'll be a lot less headache for them. When creating an interface, uh, there, there are no strict rules to have a name convention for creating an interface. I usually go with capital I as a prefix and uh, with the name of the interface. So for example, our class names will be, for example, I and the name of your class, person or patient details or whatever the name of your uh, uh, interface you prefer to have. So both the first letter and the second letter will be uppercase. This is supposedly on how an interface will look. So I have, I have created a, an interface uh, in a separate file called model.ts. Uh, you can come up with a name of your choice like for every individual interfaces you can create a separate file and then name the file based on that so it'll be easier for you to manage and maintain and uh, I, I'm just using a file created a file inside the patient's of uh, patient's directory so I believe you know it should be uh, inside a separate folder wherein you can have a subfolder or have a, 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 a names that matches your class name file names that matches your class name uh, to, to be precise okay so this is how an interface uh, will look so it will have the name of your class and then it will be having your id oh, sorry the your property and the data type of your property so in this case some more strings and some more booleans and some more numbers and it will have you can also define a custom um, data type like this interface for for this array and then define them as such okay so let's move on um, to the other bits like um, yeah so this is our the previous one that we have seen in the change detection tutorial we're going to leverage that so we'll be having a do something method and then do something gets triggered now what exactly are we planning to do? So for example, uh, let's say you have a method called uh, get post and in get post, you might be trying to send some data. So, so for example, a param and that param is defined as, no, no, not, let's not define that. Let's keep it like that. And then um, let's say it, it does nothing you know it, it just returns something after some huge validation it just returns something and when you're trying to um, call the get post let's assume that get post is basically um, some sort of API call and when you're calling that get post and you might pass in some value okay so if you forget let's say just in numeric or you could just say you're going to pass some boolean okay so it can it could be anything so there can be errors when you're trying to develop uh, your application so uh, the point here is when you forget to uh, typecast when you forget to define an interface for your uh, property or for your variable or field in a class or a, um, or a value passed in a method you know you may you you may have chances of running into errors uh, in your application considering that your application is large and uh, too much code to maintain you know anybody the second person comes in and checks in your code and then all, all of all of you see all of all of a sudden he might see this mess right so it's always good to have an interface but before that if you just hover over that 
you might see your param is defined as any you know that's really not a uh, good practice so all i suggest is define your um, value with an interface or a model okay something like this so instantly the ide will kicks in and tells you that this is not assignable to your parameter okay so it will say that there's a type checking happening instantly right so this will save you ton of time when you're trying to develop something let's have that i patient detail info here and let's pass that data and see you won't get any error at all because um, visual studio code i mean compares the types uh, between the get post definition and the call it, uh, and the calling method and it, everything matches properly so there aren't any any issues you know the, these kind of things right if you're going to if you're not going to define any types you know this will work fine i mean angular doesn't complains about anything but again if there is no type definition and if you're just passing something you know you won't be having problem you, you need to look here you won't be having problem but down the line right down the line when it comes to maintainability there will be a huge problem because when you see this get post i mean what is it doing here i mean is it fetching data or is it doing something with the numbers or you you might you might not know okay and when you look at the definition you will be clueless so it is always best best practice to have something like an interface defined wherever is possible okay so this is pretty much about um, an interface and one more instance that I can go on is when you're dealing with uh, things like um, um, API calls returns from the API calls so what I would do uh, what I would do is whatever that's uh, returned from an API call is basically just another JSON object so even you can define them uh, uh, give a shape of your object uh, like whatever uh, interface that you like why why am I doing this in the first place so when you're going to operate your on your uh, response so when you just uh, give a dot notation you will get all the definitions about the interface that you have used so whatever you're seeing here is defined in our model class See right there so that's what I'm talking about so when it comes to maintainability and you know um, so you know what property you might need down the line in your in your API call response so it'll be easy for you to manage your code back and forth so creating interfaces is a time-consuming process but trust me it is worth every effort that you make never skip creating interfaces because angular just works fine without interfaces and we may feel lazy to create interfaces while building a large app. I suggest starting with your data modeling or interfacing first soon after you plan your app architecture. I hope you may like this video. If so, please comment and please do subscribe to my channel to make more videos and do share it with your friends. Thank you.